as per normal, uh, all of the release, release notes for what we've released uh, in the versions of Chocolatey uh, are available on our doc site. Starting at the beginning, um, the, 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 there is a warning there, and the warning there is mainly for our uh, commercial customers. Uh, if you are uh, making use of Chocolatey extension, then what, what we can do at Chocolatey at the minute is we can ensure dependencies going down the way. So if you install the latest version of Chocolatey license extension, it will install uh, the correct minimum version of Chocolatey. Uh, but if you uh, install the latest version of Chocolatey, the 012X uh, releases, without installing uh, the Chocolatey license extension, you are going to miss some of the features. Uh, so the warning there is basically saying that uh, if you are installing the 012 and you're a licensed customer, then you're going to need to upgrade to the latest version of the license extension, which is currently 3.1. So it's just, a, just something to bear in mind as you're going through that. Uh, and the other thing to note here is that technically there is a breaking change in this release. Uh, the breaking change in the sense that we removed uh, a feature that has been in Chocolatey. Now, this is a feature that's been in Chocolatey for around five years. Uh, it was only ever meant to be there as a short-lived feature, uh, as a transition uh, period, uh, when we added a new piece of functionality uh, and then we removed it again. Uh, so the feature was only meant to be there short term, but it ended up staying there uh, for over five years. So we're not expecting that it's going to impact on anybody. Um, but if you uh, run into any problems with it, uh, then definitely feel free to reach out. Uh, but like I say, technically, it is a breaking change, and that's why it's listed as that. Um, before I get on to the next features, uh, I wanted to introduce the Docker images that we, that we now have. And I'll explain why I want to introduce them first before showing the features. Uh, but what you can do is you can run off to uh, Docker Hub now, and we've now got uh, the official chocolate organization on uh, Docker Hub. And on there, we have got um, the chocolate choco image. Now, I always get the, the, the distinction wrong between what's an image and what's a container mixed up and round the wrong way. So if I say it incorrectly, I do apologize, but um, I'm still learning what Docker is and how to use it. I'm a complete noob at uh, Docker. But... What we do have is we do have official released versions of uh, Chocolatey inside a Docker container now. Um, now there were community-driven efforts that, that did uh, that provided similar functionality. Um, uh, Stefan Scherer had one. Um, there was another one from the, another community member. The slight issue with those ones is that those uh, Docker containers um, weren't officially signed and built by we chocolate software so while they could be run they uh had to be run with the dash dash allow an official option and you also had to um or sometimes you would get a prompt that said uh, oh you're not running the the license the official version of chocolate there was a there's a nag screen in there uh, as you were using it but what this is this is an officially built officially uh, compiled uh, signed, etc. version of Chocolatey running on both uh, a Linux-based uh, Docker container and a Windows one. So you're not going to get those NAG screens. Uh, you're not going to uh, have to get those. Uh, it's not gonna, you're not, you're not going to have to make use of the dash dash 11 an official flag. Um, it's all re there, ready to go uh, for you to make use of. So some of you out there might be saying, well, why on earth would I want to use a, a Linux container, or why would I want to use a Docker container when I'm using Chocolatey? Because Chocolatey is a Windows package manager, and that's absolutely a fair question. Uh, but basically, it comes down to what kind of workflows you're doing with Chocolatey. So if you're using Chocolatey uh, as a consumer, all you're really interested in is obviously installing packages and, and getting applications running on your machine. If you are on the other side of the chocolatey uh, fence, where you are a maintainer of packages, someone who's creating packages for consumption uh, on the commun chocolate community repository, or you are creating for them internally within your, uh, your, your company, or you're trying to introduce it into um, some CI CD pipelines uh, on Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions, then there's absolutely a place for doing the creation portion of Chocolatey um, on a non-Windows platform. And that's kind of what I wanted to illustrate today. So over here, this is me running on my Mac. So this is iTerm with ZSH as the terminal running on my Mac. 
Um, so what I can do, because I've already done a Docker pull and I've already got the images on my machine, I can run Chocolate. Oh, we're obviously going to go through everything that I've been doing today. Um, so I can run one command, and this is document on our, on our website. Uh, you can run a, a command, and that gives me chocolatey. So I can run chocolate, chocolatey as if I was on a Windows machine, and it'll print out the current version. Um, so one of the things I wanted to uh, address, um, uh, there was quite quickly after the 0.12.0 release of chocolatey, we did do a 0.12.1 release. Uh, one of those is because uh, I missed something when I was doing a review. Uh, so if I run the command here uh, that I'll get to in a second, which is choco template dash H, if I run that, then up here in the usage section, uh, this now says uh, choco template. But if we run the 0 0.12.0 0 version of chocolatey, which I can do by running the other Docker image that I have locally on my machine, if I do choco template dash H here, and I scroll up to that same usage section, then we'll see that it said, unfortunately, choco pin rather than choco template. So that was uh, that was obviously a miss on our part, uh, but it has been corrected in the latest version, the, the 0 one release of uh, Chocolate. So that was one of the bug fixes that we addressed in that release. The, the kind of workflow that you would go through or why you would want to run Chocolate uh, from a creation standpoint on your machine. Now, one of the commands that's been in Chocolate for a long time is the choco new command. So Choco New is essentially, uh, it takes a default template and it creates a bunch of files. And in those files, you have instructions and in how you can create uh, a chocolate package to do uh, installation of an MSI. You've got instructions for how you would um, create a zip file uh, archive directory uh, uh, package that you want to install. It's got lots and lots of information in there, but to be fair, it's got a lot of information in there that once you've done it a couple of times, uh, obviously I'm not running in my Docker image anymore. I'm gonna go back and run in my Docker image. Um, if I run Choco new Bob, then it's gonna create a package called Bob and it's gonna template out all those files. Now, it's fair to say that once you've been through that process a couple of times as a maintainer, um, you, you, you know all, or you know at least the, the, the core mechanics of what you want to do with a chocolate package. So you don't actually need to go have all of those files anymore. So you actually get into the habit of running Choco New, deleting a bunch of stuff, and then building the package from uh, the files you're actually interested in. But built into Chocolatey is a uh, templating mechanism that actually allows you to use your own templates. Now, that you could do that before by manually crafting the uh, files on the file system. So you could actually override what the default template is. So rather than getting uh, the chocolate installed.ps1, the before modify, the uninstall, et cetera, you could handcraft your own template. But also on top of that, Chocolatey supports the concept of a template package. So you could actually create your own template. So when you went to, when you could then do, so let's get one installed. I don't have anything installed on this. Docker uh, image just now. So if I do choco list local only, uh, we'll see that I've got no packages installed. Uh, but if I do choco install msi.template, that's one of the templates that exists on the chocolate community repository. So what it will do is it'll run off to the chocolate community repository, it'll bring it down, it'll extract it. And at that point, I've now got a new template on my machine that I can make use of. Now, none of this is new functionality. I'm going to get to the, the new but the functionality, but I think it's important to address why we did this. So now with that on in there, I can do choco new Bob one, and I can pass in template MSI. So it will create me a new package. It'll scaffold out a package again, but you'll notice that it's not the same as it was before. I've now got a verification.txt file um, or I've got a different verification.txt file. The files that have been placed on disk are not the same. They're more geared towards specifically doing uh, an, a creation of an MSI-based chocolate package. So that's really helpful, but there's a little bit of overhead there because what I had to do was I had to do choco uh, new bob1 dash dash template MSI. What would have been nicer is if I could tell Chocolate that I actually want to use that MSI template by default. So that's one of the new things we've added in Chocolatey. So if we do choco config uh, set dash dash value equals default <coughs> template, I'm going to try and type it right, template name with a value of uh, MSI, 
That's going to set that config. Um, Jocko config. Oh, uh, feel free to keep me right, Paul. Uh, that should be name. I was just about to say that, Gary, when that popped <laughs> if, up. If I run Choco, uh, if I run Choco, Choco config set, de default template name. So now if I do, let's clear this out again. If I do Choco new Bob 2, I'm going to get that same MSI template being created rather than the default template that came out of the box. So it's one of those quality of life improvements that if I, as a maintainer, I've got my own template package and I want that to be the default, we can absolutely do that uh, by changing that configuration value. Now, you don't have to mess around with manually changing files on the file system. You can uh, install the package, set the config, and then you're off, uh, off and running using just that, using that specific template. So if I go ahead and install another of the templates that is available on the community website, just to show out the next feature. So I'm going to install the zip template. So again, it's just a template package. It extracts a bunch of files in the file system, and then I can make use of them. We've now got a new command, and this shipped as part of 0.12.0, and it's the template command. So what this does is it basically informs us of what template packages you've got installed. So it's similar in a sense to Choco List Local Only, where it tells me what packages I've got installed, but it restricts it down to just the specific information about the template packages. You can see there that I've got a zip template. I've got the MSI template. MSI is marked as the default because it's got the star beside it. <clears throat> and then I can drill down a little bit further. If I do the Choco Info uh, command, I can say, give me more specific information about the MSI template. So here, um, we've it's, it's listing out these are the files that are contained within that template. So that's what I'm going to get each time I run Choco New with it. And all of this stuff um, was essentially contributed by one of our community members. Uh, so for those that are familiar with uh, the cake is N-A-O-H uh, on uh, GitHub uh, or the cake, as we'll shorten it down for the purpose of the stream. Uh, the cake, uh, this is his workflow. He's a, a, a very prolific maintainer on the chocolate community repository, as well as being a moderator uh, on the chocolate community repository. And his workflow, his daily driver is a Linux machine. So he wanted to uh, be able to have this workflow of doing Choco New, Choco Pack, Choco Push on his machine. So all of this effort came from him. And one of the things that he is going to be working on going forward <clears throat> is when you run the Choco Template Info command, is he actually also wants to be able to list out uh, what parameters that uh, what parameters are available within those uh, files? Because uh, when you do a choco new, you can actually at the command line pass in things like um, the, the the version number, the package ID, and there's all, all sorts of other tokenized values that you can pass in. And by reading those files, uh, you can then list out at the command line or oh, that these are the parameters that you can pass in, and then obviously provide um, example. Uh, scripts that you could use if you're running that chocolate new command. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that gets um, uh, stubbed out. Uh, so definitely a lot of thanks to uh, the cake for all the work that you did in this uh, new template command. Uh, having showed that, uh, one of the things I wanted to reiterate was that if you have this version of chocolate installed with an older version of um, chocolate license extension, <clears throat> then the Choco template command won't be available to you. And that's why it's important that you upgrade to the latest version of uh, the Choco license extension. <clears throat> Gary, just a quick question on that. If you're using an older version of the Choco license extension, will it still work with this version of Choco? Apart from using... the command not being available. Correct. Yeah. So from a from a, a raw functionality point of view, yes, um, it will appear that everything's working. So if you've got... Uh, 0 0.3 or 3.0 of the license extension installed along with 0 0.12.0, then functionally it will uh, work as you expect it to. Choco one install, upgrade, uninstall will all just work. It, the, the problem though is that um, the the help command, no, not the help command, the template command won't be registered within the license extension. Therefore, uh, it's not able to find it. So when you do a Choco uh, dash H, so if I scroll up here, Choco dash H, uh, where is it? Choco dash H lists out all of the available commands, template and templates being one of them. If you did the same thing with an older version of Choco license installed at the same time, then you would see this list, 
but it just wouldn't have template or templates at the end of it um, so, okay. because it, it doesn't know about them. Um, mm. That is an area of the interaction between chocolate and chocolate license that we absolutely want to uh, improve upon because there are things that we can do to make that better so that um, that uplift of chocolate licensed uh, isn't required when we uh, add a new command to the chocolate open source. Awesome. I think one of the things I was surprised <coughs> about is that everything you're doing so far is in a Linux container. It's not a Windows container. It's in a Correct. Linux container. It's not, this isn't a Windows machine either. So that's really good. That's cool that, that you can demo all these new features or, or this the new feature just on a Linux container. Chocolate has come a long way. Yeah, so, and, and to, to speak to that point, so Chocolatey, um, since early doors, because I know that Rob demoed it at an early puppet comp uh, a while back, Chocolatey has always been written in such a way that it could run on Linux. So you could always run it with Mono. Um, uh, if you have Mono Mono installed, which is the uh, open source implementation of the uh, .NET framework, if you had Mono installed, then you could technically run the Chocolatey.exe. But it came with the problem of, well, you had to have Mono installed. You had to pass in the dash dash allow an official, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it, it, the story wasn't great. But then along came Docker. Uh, and then along came the cake, uh, who helped us to get, to get this uh, all put together. So now we've got that Docker image um, that you can make use of in, in this exact scenario. But the thing that I love about it, or the thing that I think is really cool, if I do chocolate list local only now, I've got those packages installed, right? If I exit from that Docker container and then I run it again, and then I run Choco List local only, those packages aren't installed anymore. So it's that quick to go from essentially, I've done a bunch of stuff, I've done some testing, I've done some installations, I then exit out of it and then I run it again, and then I'm back to a fresh uh, machine where I can do stuff from uh, creating packages, uh, creating uh, uh, testing things out, etc. Uh, so it, it's quite there's an interesting workflow, a very interesting workflow, especially when you combine uh, these new Docker images with um, the likes of GitHub Actions and uh, Azure DevOps for uh, running automate, automated installations or automated uh, publishing of packages based on uh, some mechanism that says, "Oh, there's a new version of Firefox available. Let me run my script that automatically generates the package to push it to." Um, uh, the chocolate community repository. So there's lots of uh, things in that uh, workflow that are really interesting that we're going to have to dive into. Uh, so one of the other things I wanted to mention, um, I will flip back to the lease notes in a second, but I'll, I'll go through a couple of them that I know that are related to what we're doing here. Uh, so one of those is if I run a chocolate install uh, window stat, and you'll be thinking, well, that's just a stupid thing to do. I'm in a Linux container running on a Mac, why would I want to run an application called Windowstat that is specifically for listing out the directories in Windows? And you absolutely wouldn't, but I just wanted to point out one of the things that we added. Um, so it's basically this line here. So Windowstat is not a supported package on a non-Windows system. So we're not going to prevent you from installing a package that's a Windows application, but Chocolatey is essentially going to say, that's not a supported package that only the template packages are currently supported. And that's what I was using before. So when I did uh, choco install msi.template, I didn't get that warning because the .template package is a supported package. And what you'll see is, um, yeah, this one here, skipping PowerShell and ShimGem portions of the install due to non-Windows. So ch uh, Chocolate is aware that it's running on a, uh, a POSIX operating system, and it's not going to do the things that are at the minute Windows only. But all of the packaging has been placed in the file system. So if I run Chocolist local only, that Windows star package is there. So then you might be thinking, well, why would I want that? And there, there, there is an edge case where if you do a, dot, uh, uh, a Choco install of ruby.portable, ruby.portable is essentially just an EXE that gets extracted onto disk. Uh, and that's one of the other features that we got added because we're now listing out correctly where that uh, Ruby portable, the contents of that Ruby portable package got extracted to. We didn't have that line in the output before. That's an uh, addition that we've made this time round. Now, technically, with that Ruby portable.exe extracted to the uh, file system, 
if you knew the magic incantation for finding that file and running it with mono, then technically that Windows EXE would run under this image running under mono. So there's an edge case there, and that's why we've left it so that um, we will allow the installation of chocolate packages onto these boxes, but do so at your own risk is basically what we're saying. Okay. So with that, um, I'm going to go back to my release notes and start going through them. So what we've spoken about so far is we've spoken about the uh, chocolate template command that we've got added in. We've spoken about the addition of the configuration option for the default template, I showed you how you were using that. So let's go through some of the bug fixes. And before I go through this too much, I kind of need to stress again, uh, I need to do a big shout out to uh, the cake. I don't know if he's in the uh, Twitch stream or if he's in the chat room, but a, a large portion of these bug fixes are all due to, to, to the cake. Um, a lot of them are uh, quality of life improvements for running uh, chocolate on Linux or on a POSIX machine. And as we'll go through them, we'll see that um, they're, they're basically things that have cropped up as he's been going through his workflow of uh, creating and maintaining packages uh, for the chocolate community repository. So the first one there was building a package on Linux uh, if the description has encoded an XML character. <clears throat> so there was an edge case there where um, if the description uh, element within the new spec uh, had an encoded XML special characters, the chocolate pack would fail. Um, so in this scenario, I'm fairly sure that the cake went and found that there was essentially a bug in the NuGet.core library that Chocolate is dependent on, fixed it in NuGet.core, that then got pulled through into Chocolate and then released within this release. So it was a reasonably large undertaking. Uh, so again, credit to him for uh, figuring all that stuff out. And another one there, which is building a package on Linux if the new spec does not have a files element. Um, again, there's an edge case there that only came up once someone was then actively using a POSIX based machine for doing uh, that workflow creation rather than on a Windows machine. So if it didn't have a files element within the new spec, then the pack would fail again. So there's a bug fix there to figure that out. <clears throat> Choco pack command fails on non Windows when the nutkeg already exists. So if you were to have gone to, into your uh, machine, run Choco pack uh, Bob, and then run Choco pack Bob again, that second pack would fail because the existence of uh, the, the bob.nutkeg that's on the file system. Fairly sure, if I recall correctly, that was due to the old, old difference between Windows and Linux where one's got a forward slash and one's got a backslash. Um, and it came down to the fact that it was looking for a file or expecting a file where it, there was never going to be one. Uh, so by switching to the right path separator, that one uh, started working again. <clears throat> Uh, install location is invalid on Linux uh, if the chocolate install environment variable is not set. Um, so again, there's an edge case there, um, just in the way that I'm fairly sure that one was a path separator issue as well. Uh, but all of these are all of these uh, uh, bullet point items are linked uh, with the, the, the bug report uh, and the associated uh, uh, pull request that went with it. So if you're interested, you can absolutely dig into that to find out some more details on that. Uh, this one was definitely a path separator issue. Um, so during upgrade, removal of the old, uh, old chocolate.exe does not use absolute file path on Linux. So the thing there obviously is on Windows, it worked because uh, relative file paths were working the way they wanted to, but on Linux, it worked differently. So we had to, we had to work around that. Uh, attempting to use protected data.protect with local machine scope fails when or run on non-Windows system as a non-root user. Uh, so that was a fun one as well. That was uh, uh, the cake dug again into the NuGet.core assembly, found out that there was an actual bug, if I recall correctly, with the protected data.protect method when running under mono. Uh, and then he added a workaround to make that work uh, in the scenarios that uh, we wanted it to work on. Uh, chocolatey packaging script, chocolatey before modified PS1, incorrectly running on Windows platforms. Uh, so this one was... I actually forget the details on this one. So let's go and have a quick look. So this one was before modified scripts are run during uh, upgrades and uninstall on non-Windows platforms. Right, I remember this one now. So there was a, 
when you do an upgrade on a machine, um, there is a, some internal mechanisms that run. So it's not just the chocolate installed on PS1 file. Uh, chocolate will actually run the uh, chocolate before modified .ps1 file if it exists in the previous package. Um, so what was happening was that uh, during an upgrade, the PowerShell script, the install script wasn't running, but I think it was attempting to uh, run the before modify script, which was incorrect because it was doing stuff on a Windows machine or non-Windows machine when it wasn't meant to. So again, the cake came along and figured that one out. Uh, Choco install command uh, ignores install arguments when specifying direct path to a nutkeg. This one wasn't necessarily a Linux, the non-Windows based bug, <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> um, or thankfully in the sense that a lot of the bug fixes that went into this release were, were all around that creation workflow. Uh, so that one was simply, um, if you do Choco install and you provide a direct path to the nutkeg, rather than uh, saying, uh, nutkeg name and then dash dash source, then the, uh, the if you provided additional installation arguments to that command, then they wouldn't have been respected. And the last one, deleting NuGet temp folders fails when running on Linux. Uh, again, I'm fairly sure that that's a path separator bug, but let's maybe go and have a quick look at what was going on there just so that we can see it. Yeah, absolutely, you can see it in the title. You use a forward slash instead of a system drive on non-Windows platform and the file change uh, was likely just the inclusion of a path separator. Um, so let me see. Yeah, so depending on what platform we're running on, let's use uh, environment variable system drive or use the uh, forward slash to indicate the root level that we're working on. So I would encourage you all of you, if you're interested in the inner workings of how Chocolate works and uh, how Chocolate works specifically on a non-Windows platform, then absolutely go through those issues uh, and see what the cake was busy doing. Um, so again, um, I don't know where he finds the time to do it, uh, but from a community uh, maintainer's point of view or a community contributor's point of view, he has done a lot of work on uh, this release and we're ve definitely very grateful for him improving the, the quality of life experience of running chocolatey uh, on a non-Windows system. I think if we uh, sort of named our, our releases, you know, like um, Android used to name them after sweets, and yeah. then you know, we would name this one cake, absolutely. But it, because yeah. it, as Gary says, he, he puts so much effort and so much work into to this release. Um, the vast majority of the, the work in it is is from him alone. Um, yeah. We're actually going to just give up and uh, just <laughs> just let him do it from that. But yeah. Um, so no, this, I, is, actually, this is I, I had the same thought. I think we need to start having names for our releases yes. going forward. Because um, while zero twelve zero is factually correct, uh, it, I in my head I refer to this one as the the Linux release, or as you say, the cake release. Um, we definitely should start that going forward. But but if he keeps up that pace, then we're going to need to come up with flavors of cake. So we could have chocolatey cake. <laughs> this could be the first one. Then we could have vanilla oh, cake. Right. Well, um, well. strawberry cake, you know. So yeah, he he he'll need to keep this pace up in order to get them all all named that way. Well, I'll let you continue, Gary. Um, so I was going to ask if you had any comments on the the bug fix section. Uh, so we'll go into the improvements. Uh, so where do we start? Um, well, so this one I've already showed. Uh, so warn about unsupported packages when executing chocolatey on a non-Windows platform. So we spoke about that already. Uh, so that was uh, when I attempted to install. The Windowsstat package, we had some additional output here that said uh, Windowsstat is not supported, a not supported package on the Windows, uh, non Windows systems. Uh, so that's what that one was all about. And then the second one, which I kind of already alluded to as well, which is display install location for purely portable packages. So before, when I did the install of the Ruby.portable package, previously this line where it said software installed to uh, location, it would have said something along the lines of uh, undetermined uh, software installation location, because typically Chocolate e is doing installations of uh, applications. Those applications make entries into the registry, and then Chocolate e reports those installation locations from the registry. Uh, in the scenario of a purely portable package, there are no registry entries, so we obviously can't report that. So uh, that addition uh, makes it uh, a little bit clearer uh, where those files have ended up. So that's a, a nice one to, to have put in. 
Uh, provide more clarity on errors when attempting to push the chocolatey community repository. Okay, so this is um, this is an interesting one. Um, so let's try and talk through it a little bit. Um, I haven't got a demo of it because that would be dangerous. Uh, that would involve pushing packages live. Uh, and yeah, let's just not do that. Um, but if you imagine the scenario where you have been maintaining a package and you pushed up different package versions and it's all been working happily and it's, they've been getting approved and moderated and everybody's using it and everything's great. And then you come to your next version and it fails to push. You've done the pack, it's worked correctly, you've installed it locally, it's all working fine. And you go to push it and you get this kind of weird error back that says, oh, there was an error pushing your package and uh, oh, it might be because the package version already exists. And then you run off and check just to make sure that someone else hasn't pushed that same package version because there might be multiple maintainers on it. You find that that package version doesn't exist. So you go back to the command line and you try again and it's still not working. And you're like, well, what's going on? So the underlying issue for that when that happens, because a lot of people have reached out to us via Twitter, uh, Gitter, and now Discord, the underlying issue with that specific one is typically that the description element of your new spec file has become too big. And it, it's, it's gone over the allowed limit, which is, which is 4,000 characters. So if you go back to what I said before, it's that package has been packing and pushing fine, uh, but in creating the next version, you've maybe added more information into the description and you've added more release notes. You've added something in there. <clears throat> That's pushed it over the 4,000 character limit. So when you try and push it, uh, it fails because you're not allowed to have it more than 4,000 characters. But the command line, it didn't, it didn't tell you or didn't give you any hints as to what was going on. Now, if you ran the same choco push command with dash dash verbose and you dug through the output a little bit, then you would see reference to the fact that the description was too long. Uh, but that obviously wasn't a good user experience. Uh, so that improvement there is about uh, bringing that information about the failure to the surface. Uh, so there's a much better error message now when you attempt to push. And if it, in that scenario, because there's a couple of them, one is the if the title's too long or if the description is too long, you get a much better error message uh, shown to you at the command line now. So that one again was the cake. So thanks to him for that one as well. Um, support empty directories within a uh, chocolate template folder. Uh, based on the fact that it's got template in the name, you could probably guess that this was from the cake as well. Uh, but this one was, it's a little bit of an edge case, um, but there was no reason not to uh, include it. Um, so what I mentioned before was, if you create your own template and you publish it as a, a nut keg uh, with the dot template at the end, then that's a zip file. So you can't, I, or you can't, I don't think you can have empty directories within a zip file. So based on the title, you would wonder why are you allowing the support of empty directories when you run Choco template or run Choco new when you can't actually put them into the template package. But this goes back to the other way of creating templates where you're managing directly on the file system. Um, if in your template folder, you have empty directories, there is sort of an expectation that that empty directory gets created in the uh, new package that you've just created. So again, uh, it was a quality of life improvement just to uh, uh, adhere to that and uh, create that empty directory within that newly created uh, chocolate package. Uh, the next one, snapshotting of files in Coughlin transforms has been enabled on non-Windows systems. So this was basically to say, again, the workflow as uh, installations are happening and as things are happening on uh, uh, as you're going through chocolate package installations, uh, there was something, there's one thing that the snapshot of files and config transforms was enabled on a Windows machines. Uh, but when we went through testing, um, there was no reason to not enable that on um, non Windows machines. So we flipped that over and, and made that so that it works. Uh, and again, it's just uh, improving that experience of uh, installing, creating, and maintaining packages on uh, a Linux machine. Uh, prevent usage of alternative installation and upgrade sources on non-Windows systems. So what this is referring to, uh, if we go back to here, if I were to attempt something like Choco install, I'm going to get the names wrong, but there's a feature called Hyper-V uh, and where you can say dash dash source uh, Windows features. So if you wanted to enable Hyper-V or enable uh, IIS on your Windows machine, 
And then you can, on, on a Windows machine, you can use the dash dash source Windows feature. So it will reach into uh, Windows, it will enable that feature, and it will be there ready for you to use. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense on a non-Windows machine. So that one, we do physically stop you from attempting that on a, a, a non-Windows machine. Other ones that come to mind would be, um, is it WebPI? So again, that's not a supported uh, alternative source. So that's the web platform installer that is for a Windows only one. And at the minute, if I were to do, is it Ruby? Yeah. So uh, the Ruby source, if you're attempting to install gems, that's supported on Windows, but it's not supported on Linux. Um, so again, those installation mechanisms have essentially all been turned off. And that was just to make it, uh, attempt to make it clear what is and is not supported on a Linux machine. Uh, and then an improved response messaging regarding moderation times. Uh, that was a small documentation change that came along as a result of some feedback from a user. In that, it kind of indicated that a moderation, uh, a, a, a maintainer of a package could expect uh, a feedback from a moderator within, I think it originally said two to three days. Realistically, that's not how, not how long it takes. Uh, there's, there's ebbs and flows uh, with the moderation process. If, people, if moderators are out for uh, holidays or illness or family commitments, et cetera, um, the moderation times do fluctuate up and down. Uh, so that was a small documentation change, like I say, to attempt to make it clearer about uh, setting expectations there. Uh, so it was just a change to the output, which was uh, you can where you specifying where you can check the moderation status, as well as setting expectations as to uh, what to do if you haven't heard back about uh, something about your package. So those were all the improvements. Um, Paul, do you have any comments on any of those? Or uh, no, I, I was going to say we're going to move on to the documentation ones. I think that would be. Uh, it's interesting for me when we, we document things because it's it's where everybody gets the information for what we're doing. So we're talking through this, and this is kind of first one that we've done is a, a Twitch stream talking about you know the the improvements we've done, the bug fixes, etc. And previous to that, it was always just put into the documentation, and it would just be a bit transparent. It would be nobody really sees what we've changed. For me, all of that. Um, and the fact that we're going through that is really interesting. And I hope people um, on the Twitch stream are getting um, information from that about how we uh, maintain the product, how we see the improvements, and how we sort of balance out the, the bug fixes that we could put into the least improvements. Um, and again, that documentation at the end to, to help kind of tie it all together. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's all I had on the, the release notes so far. Um, so yeah, with the, so we'll just quickly go through the documentation segment. So what um, one of the things that we should point out, and maybe it's, it's worth going through um, the what the cake's done for us. So if you go back to this one, um, we are starting to be a bit more stringent, uh, if that's the right word, when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, issue templates, ensuring that all those issue templates have got. Um, correct formatting, it's got all the information that we want to uh, achieve, etc. So I'm going to try and find an example of one of the ones that we have done more recently. So let's go up here and look at this. Because um, this flows into the documentation uh, that Paul's referring to there. So um, there are issue templates starting to be rolled out across all of the chocolate repositories uh, and also the chocolate community repositories on GitHub. Uh, so what you'll tend to see is from an issue standpoint, we'll, we'll be asking you, well, what are you seeing? Uh, what do you expect to happen? Are there any known workarounds that you're aware of? Uh, give us the log file so that we can dig into it a little bit. So we get all the information that we need rather than having to have that uh, initial backwards and forwards, or can you tell us this? Can you tell us this? So when you're creating an issue, if you are creating an issue on uh, Chocolatey, uh, I don't know if it's got... Is it this one? The oh, that's chocolate gooey. Sorry, that's obviously the wrong one. Um, where's the bug? Report an issue. Sorry, this one. Um, we would ask that you respect the the issue templates, but what we will hopefully see going forward is that these will switch over potentially to form based issues, where you kind of have to provide the required information before being able to create it. Uh, so expect some changes in that. Uh, but the reason I wanted to bring that up is because then from a pull request standpoint, um, that one 
doesn't have a link pull request. Why? Oh, that's because it went into the other. That's the one that went into NuGet.core. That's why it doesn't have a pull request link there. But if we go to another one, what I wanted to show is the other side, which is the pull request side. And then what we are starting to see in here, and this isn't one of them, um, what I'm trying to show you is that we then ask for, as a, as a contributor to the project, what we're asking for then is, well, how have you tested this? Um, what have you done as a person doing the work? How have you tested this? Because that can then lead to discussion as part of the PR review. Well, have you thought about testing this? Have you thought about testing this? It opens up that dialogue and makes sure that everyone's on the same page and helps set expectations about what's going to happen with this pull request. Um, and then on top of that, uh, the pull request then uh, tends to have uh, an, another section that is, does this require documentation? And if so, has that documentation been done? So the documentation that ultimately goes into uh, doc.chocolate.org, there are different sources for that information. Some of that comes from directly uh, markdown files that we edit uh, in the docs repository. Some of it comes from uh, XML documentation uh, or um, PowerShell help based documentation on the PowerShell helpers or on the command objects themselves within Chocolatey. And we pull all of that together. So we're basically getting a little bit more stringent and a little bit more rigor around ensuring that all of that documentation is done as part of a release so that when we ultimately do ship it, uh, all of that information is available on the site and ready to be used. Uh, there are things that we're going to miss. So definitely hold us to account if there's things missing or there's things not um, uh, completely correctly, definitely hold us to account on that. Uh, so one of the, a couple of the ones that are here is uh, we fixed outdated bit.ly links in the command documentation. Um, so uh, we did use the bit.ly uh, URL shortener for a few things. Uh, we are transitioning over to use our own uh, Choco URL shortener. So for some of them, if I go up to here and do Choco slash community, then that will then redirect to Discord as an example. But that's just highlighting the fact that we've got the Choco uh, domain and we'll use that for URL shortening and for official links, you'll see them cropping up into the documentation as well. Uh, update the default template regarding building chocolatey packages on non-Windows system. Uh, so this one was an interesting one in the sense that um, if we look at the pull request, uh, the actual change. Previously in the uh, new template, we would have said building from Linux, you may need this instead. So there was a specific handling there for uh, things that need to be done differently. If you're building a package on Linux compared to on Windows, with all the changes that the, the cake made uh, in this release, that was no longer required. So it was a small change, but again, it's just making sure that everything lines up in terms of the functionality that's now provided. Uh, and this one came from uh, Maurice, I think, if I, if I recall correctly. Uh, this one was a, a small minor change again, but it was basically saying that when Maurice in the previous release added uh, support for the seeing the chocolate exit code on reboot detected environment variable, uh, we initially thought that that was going out on a 0.10.16 release, uh, but then it got updated and we pushed it out in a 0.11.0 release. So Maurice noticed, noticed that, sent in a PR, it got merged in, and then everybody is uh, up to date.